This is Intrepid Bear, a 40 foot sailboat off to explore the world with her crew Ian and Kate. Come aboard and let's see what's out there. Last time you left us deep in the Rio de Arusa in a peaceful anchorage behind the small island of La Toja. We could have spent much longer in Arusa, but we had various reasons to head south. On the morning of our departure, it seemed we were not going to be enjoying the stunning views on the way out. So we're literally creeping through the fog. It's quite a tight congested area, uh, but we want to get out. So we're both looking one out each side. We've got the radar going. Radar says there should be a, a target up on our starboard side any minute now. Hopefully it will be a red navigation buoy. As we're having, heading outwards, you heard someone shout? In still foggy weather, the sound can really travel and it's very difficult to ascertain where it was coming from. Just sounding the horn. There was no response to our sound signal and we didn't find anything untoward. It was quite possible that it could have been someone shouting on the island nearby. But we did find the navigation buoy that we were looking for emerging from the gloom. There's the red buoy in the fog. That's good. The visibility really was about as bad as it gets. We could only see about 20 meters. And you remember the maze of fish farms from the last episode. They actually turned out to be quite useful. As you can see there, the fish farms are quite useful because they show uh, up really well on the radar in these flat conditions. And um, there's a path down between them. And because everything's showing on the radar, you can see that channel down through, which is quite useful in these conditions because we can't see anything out here. But amongst all those static radar targets, we need to keep a really sharp eye out for anything that is moving. This target here, you can see every time it does a sweep, it moves a bit. So we can't see anything outside, but that is a boat that is approaching us. So we've got to keep a close eye on that. Now would probably be a good time to explain how our modern electronics help us navigate through zero visibility like that. Okay, so this is our um, Raymarine Axiom chart plotter, and it's paired with a Quantum 2 Doppler radar, which is up the mast. So. The um, Axiom chart plotter is a multi-function display and it can do all sorts of things to help us navigate through the, through the fog. The first thing it can do is it is basically a moving map with our position displayed very accurately on it. We're alongside the pontoon here down in uh, Portimao in Portugal at the moment and you can see that the boat is lined up exactly on the pontoon. So it's a moving map, it navigates for us basically a sat nav for a boat although we call them chart plotters not sat navs and then on the um, chart plotter here there are you can see all these flashing symbols and these are all other boats showing up on a system called AIS AIS is automatic identification system and that will show you the position of other boats because they transmit their position but if you click on any one of them then it gives you its MMSI number so you could call it it gives you its speed over the ground and it gives you the closest point of approach which is really important and the TCPA, the time to the closest point of approach. So that helps you avoid anything out there. There's one drawback with AIS. AIS works on that vessel transmitting and not all vessels do transmit. Um, not all leisure vessels have AIS and all commercial vessels should have it but it could be broken. Um, and fishing vessels in particular turn it off because they don't want you to know where their fishing grounds are quite often. What we then can use instead, or as well as, another system is radar. So radar stands for radio detection and ranging. That's the old fashioned display that you might have seen on the war movies. It's spinning round and round, drawing a picture of what it can see. Um, radar will sends out a series of pulses and when that pulse hits something, it bounces back and shows on the screen. This is the coastline along here. And then these group of boats over here, this group of targets over here is the anchored boats over in the anchorage. Um, the benefit of radar is it can see pretty much everything as long as it's set up right. The downsides are that it is reliant on a little bit of interpretation from the operator, because that's not very clear to look at. Uh, but the benefit of modern technology um, and the, the Raymarine Axiom 
is if we go back to the chart, we can overlay the radar picture over the chart. And then you can see the radar picture goes over the chart and is also over the AIS symbols. Um, and so over here in the anchorage near the entrance to the harbour, you can see the little AIS symbols and also the radar targets. So that helps you build a real good picture of what's there. So the other system that is fitted to the Quantum 2 is Doppler, um, Doppler radar. And Doppler is a system where it can immediately tell you uh, whether a vessel is moving towards you or away from you. Well, the Doppler effect is um, what causes, uh, when you hear the sound of a vehicle going past you, the sound seems to change. That's the Doppler effect. All right, and that's caused by the fact that the sound waves, because the vehicle's coming towards you, the sound waves are hitting you faster and thus increasing their frequency. And as they're going away from you, the sound waves are hitting you slower because the car's carrying the sound with it. Um, and that changes the frequency of the sound. It's the same with the radar waves. Um, the Quantum 2 Doppler uses the same principle with the radar waves. So we switch on to Doppler, but what we'll get on a Doppler radar, anything that's moving, then will show up in either red or green immediately. And it'll be green if it's moving away from you and red if it's moving towards you. There is a lot more detail I could go into, but I've probably talked enough for now. Do keep an eye out for our occasional series starting soon called Bare Essentials, where we'll go into more detail on things just like that. And in the middle of fog and zero visibility, we still got to eat. So Kate's done a fryer. Mm -mm. So that was our voyage to Bayona. We only saw one other vessel, which was this fishing boat looming out of the fog, only showing up on radar. It wasn't until we arrived at Bayona that we popped out of the fog, literally at the last minute. The anchorage at Bayona was nice and calm, but Mother Nature did wake us up with quite a display. But it was just a passing storm and we had some lovely weather in Bayona. Yesterday we sailed in past all of these islands out here. Never even saw them. Now obviously they were on radar and on the chart. That still doesn't give you a full sort of appreciation of what's there until you get out here in the daytime and go, oh, there's a big rock there that we didn't see. Obviously we avoided it with radar and everything, but uh, yeah. Anyway, quite impressive castle. Quite impressive why. Quite impressive life. Quite impressive life and quite a hell of a view down there. Bayona gets a thumbs up from us. This castle that we're walking around is the Montreal Fortress. The current battlements were built in the 11th and 12th centuries, but there has been a walled compound here right back until the times of Julius Caesar, who himself used Bayona as a base for his attack against the Herminos rebels of the neighboring Seas Islands. So right here, the castellations, if that's the right word for it, the turrety bits, the bits that go up and down on the edge of the castle, go from the triangles to these square rectangular ones. And then there's this really new looking building. Within the walls of the castle that appears to be like slightly different. So they're obviously different vintages of castle, I'm guessing. And then this is quite cool. sentry post. It was a fortress for many hundreds of years but in 1963 a hotel was built in the grounds but much of the original structure has been preserved and restored. Well, cannons around the world. I think we had cannons in. Where have you had cannons? Yeah. Riverdale. That's my second cannon in Spain. Mm -hmm. I remember you've had Indian cannons. Yes it's true. Possibly French cannons. Yes. Yeah, and cannons, and I've had plenty of English cannons. Plenty of English cannons. Cannons all over the world. It is one of the largest fortresses preserved in Spain. 
The walk around the walls is some three kilometres, and then another three kilometres around the base at sea level. This fort is huge. It's about three kilometres all the way around, apparently. But it's just massive with little bits everywhere. It's really impressive. Quite modern, as in quite recent. Oh yeah, marinero, marinero, eats. Best as we can work out, it's like a memorial to fishermen um, or people lost at sea. Fruit cake. I think Kate's been missing her gym time. And then back into the dinghy where there was another piece of history to check out. What can you tell us about this boat here? This is La Pinta, which is a replica of Christopher Columbus's boat. And um, the reason it's here is that Bayona is where the first town to hear about his discovery is a new world. In case it wasn't clear over the noise of the outboard engine, this is a replica of La Pinta, which was the fastest of Christopher Columbus's ships. And in March 1493, La Pinta arrived back in Bayona, making Bayona the first European town to learn of Columbus's discovery of America. A festival is held in March every year in memory of the event. Ah, early start this morning. It's quarter past six. Oh, that's early for us these days. Uh, it's still dark. It doesn't get light till gone seven, half seven these days. Um, today we are leaving Bayona, uh, heading south, and the next stop is Porto in Portugal. So it's a new country today. So we've got about 12 hours, um, probably motoring most of it again because there is very little wind, but there might be a little bit of the engine, I don't know. So yeah, new country day. Let's uh, get everything checked up, sorted out, and we'll head out and head to Portugal. So, just pimbling along under engine, as usual. It's meant to be a little bit of wind later, but you never know. Um, Kate's sleeping, we did neither of us. Sometimes when we go on early departures, quite often we don't sleep very well some reason I think it's just the anticipation of having to get up and worrying about sleeping uh, so it's a vicious circle so neither of us slept very well so we're doing two hour watches and Kate's off for two hours having a sleep and then when she comes up I'll go and have a sleep for two hours that should keep us going through this sort of 12 hour day um, and it just gives the other one a break nothing much going on there was a couple of dolphins zooming about the boat they've gone on um, yeah, been along 5.7 knots. There's a little bit of current against us, I think. But uh, it's just a hazy morning. But quite warm, I've got my shorts on. Jumper, yeah, but you know, it's all good. It's all good. As Bayona is not far from the border with Portugal, it was not long before we were changing our courtesy flag. Thank you. 
The dolphins are a lot of fun and brighten up any trip, but then we spotted something a lot bigger. Sadly, our camera just didn't have the zoom to do it justice. We thought we were looking at a fin whale and Kate was really excited. However, looking at this picture here, it's a great big dorsal fin. I'm now wondering if it was actually an orca. But I guess we will never know. So as forecast, the wind has gone around a bit more to the west. It's really tight on the nose now and although we can't really sail at enough speed on this point of sail, we have gained an extra knot under engine really close to the wind but uh, that'll save us fuel by getting us there quicker. We went from 5.4 to 6.5. ETA has dropped quite dramatically. Hopefully the wind will go a bit wider. We, you never know, we might actually end up sailing although it's, it's only about, although it says 11 knots on there, we're doing six knots forward. So it's probably only six or eight knots out there. But uh, yeah, sails are up and doing a bit of work. So. see the main bulging inwards there that's backed by the wind coming off the head sail um, but the total what you do is you got the shape of the head sail leads into the main sail and that backing like I say is still giving us drive it's not ideal but can't avoid it because we're just a bit too close to the wind for actual uh, proper sailing sailing but like I say we're going quite well now So this coast is crazy for pop marks. There are so many of them. A high alert the whole time down. It's like you're just going along and all of a sudden there's a string of about four of them right across in front of you. So uh, yeah, sharp eye out all the time. Portugal, baby. I know, third country. Yeah, we dropped anchor just off the marina. Call me tight, but I don't want to pay for a marina night when we're, only, we're here at like six o'clock in the evening. I'd rather go in first thing tomorrow morning and have a whole day that we pay for. I know it's tight, but hey, it's all money in it. Um, so yeah, here we are, and there's a marina in there. We're going in there tomorrow, and then the massive bridge. Over there, Anchorage is pretty flat. There's a lot of noise from the building site over there, but I guess that'll stop overnight. So a new country in a new city, Porto is a stunning and vibrant city built on the production and trade in port wine. Join us next time when we explore the city and journey up the Douro Valley to discover its secrets.